How's the water? Hey, it's super warm. Ooh, ooh, it's really nice. All right, so here's the deal. I'm gonna film a video. Take me like 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna come in and hang out. Deal? Hi, Bentley. Say hi. Benny, say hi. <laughs> All right, say bye. Bye. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about the insane dealer markups that are taking place out there right now. As many of you know, I ordered a 2021 Dodge Charger Scat Pack about a month and a half ago, and I decided to go out searching to see if I could find one today at Sticker, and it's been impossible. It's proven to be an utter nightmare, if anything, because the dealers have reached a level of greed and opportunistic behavior that I could have never imagined when they are charging 10 to $15,000 above full MSRP for run-of-the-mill, amazing, mind you, beautiful, awesome Dodge Challengers and Dodge Chargers in the market right now. So today's video, I'm gonna try and help all of you avoid getting taken advantage of and try to help you understand exactly what's going on right now and why it's not gonna last forever. But first, gotta roll that intro. jump into my incredibly overvalued 2020 Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye wide body because it's hot out. All right, so let's get started. So markups, they're everywhere right now and they're being slapped on almost every possible car you can imagine and the dealers are frankly taking advantage of this opportunity with the chip shortage and other material shortage that's led to lower production of cars and if it's a popular car the markup's going to be even more and the markup's not going to be based on any real real logic it's it's justified by a, a belief that supply and demand will control the marketplace which is absolutely true and a foundation of our entire economy and frankly everything bought and sold in the world today the problem is, is that we have to be smart when we're falling for this, when it's a temporary shortage. And we have to grasp this. This is a temporary shortage. So to give you perspective, over the years, there have been basically four categories where markups have a good place in the world. They serve a purpose and they frankly create some really cool um, engagement with buyers and popularity in cars and speculation for people to make money on things and and find niches to go and exploit those niches and it's it's always been and always will be part of our economy when it comes to products and services that people tremendously desire and seek out and here's what they are the first one is speculators speculators who buy something planning for that thing to go up in value it happens in real estate it happens with cars and it happens with jewelry it happens with all kinds of stuff but over the years speculators have always been a part of the car industry they wait for something that's going to be rare really rare to come out and they'll buy it and sit on it sometimes for many years and keep the miles low and then wait until they can sell it for a significant profit those people have made money and they do well when they plan it right. The problem is, is the dealers figured out that they need to get ahead of these speculators and not hand all that money to them. And the dealers have become speculators. So even with lower production cars, which is the second group, you've got dealers now saying, I don't want you to get that money. I'm going to take that money. So now we are competing with the very companies that are selling these cars, which has made things kind of insane. So the second group is exotic and low production cars, cars that are very rare. Markups make sense in that area. If there's only one of something, or if it's a Bugatti and there's only 20 of them out there, or it's a one of one, no question a markup absolutely makes sense and it's completely justifiable and the market will come together to determine what the price is. 
totally fair, understandable. And what's really cool is those cars generally continue to go up in value because they're not making any more of those cars. That's the whole point of the exotic cars and the low production cars is that they will never make any more, leaving an opportunity for those cars to go up in value and the person, the customer, not to lose. The third group, we can call them the C8 buyers, we can call them the Toyota Supra buyers. It's the first run, first production group of any car that is going to be a very popular car that attracts all kinds of people from all walks of life that want to get in on that thing and be the first one to ever own it. There's always been a place for those. You can go back from the beginning of time when cars started to come out, when they started to come out with all kinds of really new and, and sleek and awesome cars and the Hummer H2 and you go all the way back in the Cadillac Escalade when these things first came out there were markups if you wanted to be one of the first people to ever own one of those totally cool I actually see a place for that because the person is trading their money for the opportunity to be first to something that's a very thought-out decision and one that they know what they're getting into they realize they're probably gonna lose their money and they're good with it because they always want to be first frankly they made their bed they get to sleep in it and I think they're happy doing that and the fourth group is rich people who want to have something that no one else can get. And especially when something becomes very rare and rich people say, well then, you know what? I'm gonna buy it because no one else can get it. And you know what? Good for them. I'm all for rich people doing what they wanna do. I've been called rich quite a bit in my life because I make a good living. But believe me, I am not rich. I don't consider myself to be rich. But I am in a, in a position to be able to capitalize on opportunities when they arise. Right now, I could go stroke a check for that scat pack for $66,000 at that dealership. No problem. Pay cash for it and own it and keep it from the rest of the world. The thing is, is for many reasons I'm gonna share with you in a minute, is that is a that would be one of the stupidest things I could do with my cash. But if rich people wanna go out there, buy something extremely overpriced with the money that they're probably never gonna spend in their lifetime, I'm all for that. It brings that money into the economy and it helps create jobs and put the money back out in the economy rather than just sitting in their savings accounts. So I love it when rich people go out and say, I want that thing and I don't care what it costs. And they buy it, especially when they buy it from me. So I'm gonna answer this question right now is, well, if you're so frustrated with all the markups, you don't seem to be that frustrated with the $80,000 offer you got for your Hellcat Red Eye after owning it for a year and a half and paying $82,000 for it. Nope, I'm not. Here's why. This car is frankly intended for people with lots and lots of money. Lots of disposable cash. It has absolutely no real significant purpose in the world other than to go race it, go very, very fast, suck a ton of gasoline, and look incredibly cool on the road. And do it at a very expensive, expensive cost. So if wealthy people want to buy this car for me for $80,000, to enjoy it because there are very few of those out there, more power to them. Again, let rich people spend their money. Rule I'm always gonna have in life, if rich people wanna blow their cash, let them, especially when it's buying stuff from you. So that's cool. I have no problem with any of those four folks out there buying these things with markups. I don't care, they know what they're doing, they're smart, they got where they're at because they made smart decisions their whole lives, so if they wanna do something extremely irresponsible, then knock themselves out. Who am I to stand in their way? But there's a fifth group now that's new, that we haven't had to deal with before, that frankly I'm concerned about, that I'm sharing this video content with you to help, to protect, to maybe educate a little bit, because this fifth group is the uninformed. Frankly, those who get caught up in the excitement of sitting in a dealership and don't know the actual math and didn't do the math and assume that this thing is, is in a shortage and that there's never gonna be another one. And they get caught up by a really good salesperson who brings out two other people with general manager and manager titles and all the different titles in car dealerships and they overwhelm them with all kinds of, frankly, flawed logic on why they should pay this astronomical markup on this car. And then they say, but we'll give you 0% interest and we'll let you have a little bit, you know, very little down. We'll give you these great terms. You're gonna love owning this car. It's one of the greatest cars out there. It's just like real estate or, you know, I mean, they say all these crazy things. And that buyer gets caught up in that moment because let's say George wants to go to the car show this weekend or go to Cars and Coffee with his new Dodge Charger and he's excited about it and he realizes, well, the $900 payment, okay, that's not too bad and, and I'll give him five, $6,000 down on this 
this charger and I know they have this big markup but you know I'm gonna be one of the few people with a 2021 so so that's kind of cool and he stretches himself out way too far and now he's stuck in this huge payment and it's really exciting for the first three four five six months maybe even a year and he's dancing excited driving places showing his car off to people and every time somebody says how much did you get it for he has to lie to them because if he tells them the truth they're going to lose absolute and utter respect for him and that I have concern for because it may be a year two years or three years but George is gonna highly regret his decision and he will realize shortly after he leaves that dealership that he got sold and he got a little bit bamboozled because in six months seven months maybe it's a year that same exact car will be hitting the market even with inflation for $52,000, $53,000, and they will offer power bucks again, and all kinds of other things to incentivize people to buy that car because they will be falling off of trucks like apples off a tree. And George will be sitting there buried in his car. That group of people right now is the one that's new. It's just been created because markups are absolutely flying all over the place on regular run-of-the-mill cars and hitting regular hard-working people on modest incomes and they're jamming themselves into enormous payments enabling these dealers to turn basically one sale into three because what they've done if you're looking at an average of let's say 10 percent profit on each car when they put a market up markup of 10 to fifteen thousand dollars or twenty percent twenty percent markup on that car and the ten percent they would usually make that's 30%. They're basically trying to make the same amount of profit off of one car that they would make off of three cars. That's that's what's happening. Now, I don't want to be the guy that helps them make three cars worth of profit on one sale. I just can't get my head around that idea, no matter how bad I want something. So that's the fifth group of people that I worry about right now. That's hopefully who I'm going to help with this video. All right, so for all this to make sense, we gotta talk about the speculators for a second. We gotta talk about the demons and the TRXs because so many of you have commented on my last couple videos about those being great investments. People bought them and they've appreciated the value. The problem is, is more people, I believe, paid markups on those than did not. Those who paid sticker MSRP for a demon at $85,000, $90,000 certainly are doing really well, really, really well because those are trading between $120,000 and $135,000 right now in this great market. Before this great market, they were starting to squeeze down to the $102,000, $103,000, range. So it's okay if you paid $85,90 for it, but if you paid $150,000 for it, which I saw on the dealership floor was a hundred and sixty thousand dollar dodge demon and it was sold when it first showed up with that markup to a very wealthy individual so the group number four i talked about the rich people all came in and bought those bought so many of those cars with the dealer markups remember dealer markups whenever you see that that's the dealer saying i'm gonna take the scoop up front on the appreciation i'm gonna fast forward time and take all the potential appreciation of this car over the next two, three, four, five years, I'm gonna take it now. So that when you buy this car, you might break even three, four, five years from now, but you aren't really a speculator, you just overpaid for something. Unless you keep it long enough for it to go past that, but then with inflation, it's probably really not that big of a win. So when it comes to the lower production Dodge Demons or TRXs, I still wouldn't pay huge markups. I would order and wait or not participate in those stupid markups because the dealer's basically taking all that appreciation right up front because they have control of that inventory. And group number four, the rich people, will run to the dealers and buy those cars for ridiculous prices. But those are not scat packs. Those are not Dodge Chargers and Challengers and RTs. Not in their best day. I love those cars more than anything. But they are not low production. For a markup to be put on that, we would have to assume that you're safe because over the next two or three years, the car at least will catch that markup. But what we know is that's never gonna happen with the Dodge Charger Scat Pack. It's never gonna happen with the Dodge Challengers. It's not gonna happen with these run-of-the-mill cars that we all love to buy and have fun with. So now let's talk about the extraordinary circumstances we find ourselves in right now, which is average run-of-the-mill 
albeit very cool cars, are getting marked up tremendously. This hasn't happened. If you look through history, we haven't had massive markup on regular mass-produced cars. That's where the concern lies, in my opinion, because this is a temporary moment in time that is driving the price way up and having the dealers capitalize on basically a pandemic circumstances to take advantage of all of you out there with massive price hikes. So now, I'm all for dealers doing what they need to do to survive and be able to pay their bills, but at a certain point, when you're hurting people and you're heading to a very dangerous place and marking up a car that's mass produced and going to potentially flood the market in, in maybe a six month period from now, you're putting a lot of people in jeopardy, knowingly putting a lot of people in jeopardy. And that just gives me some pause and, and some concern. So keep in mind, whenever you buy a new car, you got to know that the first year you're going to lose anywhere, it's generally around 20%. I think that's pretty well known. People know that. You buy a car, you lose 20, 25%. And the old adage of you lose 20% the second you drive off the lot, it's really sometime during that first year you lose that 20%. Well, on these cars, that's about $10,000, $15,000 in some cases. So you lose that as soon as you buy the car, yet you paid 20% more for the car than MSRP and you didn't get any discounts. So now you're potentially 20 to even 30 percent upside down on that car the first year if anything were to happen in your life you needed to get out of it good luck it's not happening but good news is even with zero percent interest you're paying an enormous payment on a 72 or 84 month loan but at least you're paying down principal every single month so maybe around the third or fourth year you might be okay but you're still saddled with that enormous payment so a good example of this is a $53,000 sticker price Dodge Charger Scat Pack at, let's say, 3% interest is right around that $950 range. A $66,000, same exact car with all the markups, both cars putting 10% down, basically all you're going to cover if you're in California is tax and license. You're going to end up with a loan of $65,000. You're going to end up loan about $52,000 if you, if you do the, if you get the car at sticker. At 0%, you're going to pay about 917, but you're going to pay that for 72 months. So basically, you're going to pay $8,000 more for that car, even with 0% interest. And basically, what it comes down to is you're going to pay for an extra year because at that 3% interest rate, you can finance it for five years versus six years and pay it off. But you have to go six years at a similar payment just to be able to get to the same place of paying off that car. So basically, when you do this giant markup and at a long-term financing, even at 0% interest, you're gonna be paying for the car a year longer than you need to pay for it. And as long as you understand that and know that going in, that's cool. My concern has always been is that after three years and 36,000 miles, these things are out of warranty. So if you've got a huge car payment you're still stuck in, now you also have repair bills on top of that huge car payment. I'd like to be in a position in three years to be able to at least get out of the car if I'm concerned about getting stuck with repair bills or at least be in a low enough payment to where I can absorb those bills because my income's higher three years from now than it was three years ago. But what about leasing? Can you lease a car that's marked up? Well, no, you can't because even the bank doesn't agree with the price that the dealer's charging. So what the bank says is, look, we're gonna be in such a strong position that this person's gonna bury themselves in this car that we're gonna make every bit of our money and the deal, and then dealer can scoop their money off the top of that. So we're gonna take our payment, but that entire markup's gonna be stuck right on top of that payment. So to give you an example, in my last video, when the manager came out and said, for $1,230 a month with $5,000 down, you could leave in this scat pack today at a sticker of $66,000. It took me about a millisecond in my small brain to be able to figure out that you're asking me for $44,000 in payments over a three year period. So $1,262 a month for a scat pack mm -hmm. on a lease. And you could say that to me with a straight face. Absolutely, because of the market adjustment. Then with my $5,000 down, I am almost at $50,000 in total cash given to you 
for a car that stickers for $53,000, you would have sold me last year for about $47,000, $48,000. So I can't get my head around paying almost $50,000 on a lease and then having to give them back the car at the end of that three years just because they slapped a huge markup that frankly the bank's not gonna participate in reflected in that enormous payment where before I could have got that car for $650 a month probably 700 with taxes and everything and and putting minimal down but how about this there's somebody watching this video that works at a car dealership or owns a car dealership that's thinking I'm being extremely unfair to them and why can't they just charge a markup when the supply is very very low and the demand is very very high it just seems only fair that these dealers need to need to and should be allowed to and not criticized for charging a little more for their product to help them get through this tough circumstance that we're all in together and pass that on to the consumer. Fair enough, I'm all for it. I absolutely support anything that falls under the guise of fair and honest trading and dealing in capitalist society. I'm on board with that. So here's the deal. Last year, a year ago or so, they were offering Power bucks. Power bucks were seven thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars on a red eye, and seven seven thousand and seven dollars on a Hellcat, and uh, what is it four hundred four thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars on a Scat Pack, almost five thousand dollars, and then you could generally negotiate the dealer a few thousand dollars off of those prices. My red eye was listed at I think ninety two or ninety three thousand dollars, or right around that $90,000 range and I left at 82. So between the power bucks and a few thousand dollar discount, we got a deal done in the dealership that day. And we all did that over the years and it's always fair. We all feel like we want a little bit. The dealer still makes their 10% profit and maybe it's a little skinnier sometimes, but they got a sale and they got some spips on financing and some additional stuff. Maybe they sold us in finance and, and everything's good. And we feel like we got a fair deal and we wrestled in the dirt and sometimes it took five hours in the dealership. That's awesome. Here's the deal. A reasonable markup right now, in my opinion, to the general public buying mass-produced cars would be simply to eliminate the power bucks, eliminate incentives, and charge MSRP. That would still give them a lift of easily 10% on what they were charging for the cars pre the car shortage. That seems fair to me. But taking that and going on top of that another 20% just seems a little excessive to me mathematically. Call me crazy. That's just how I feel. Just my opinion. I'm happy to pay MSRP and I'm happy not to get any incentives right now based on that shortage. I think that's more than fair. Let me know what you think in the comment section below on that one. Here's another example of how things have gotten kind of crazy. So in no less than three of the dealerships that I've talked to, they've all tried to compare a Dodge Charger Scat Pack to real estate. When I said, I can't believe you would charge this much more for a car because of the current temporary sh chip shortage and supply and demand issues. And they all three responded with, well, just like real estate, your prices are through the ceiling right now. And I happen to be in real estate. So that hit me a little hard. I thought, how can this person logically say that to me with a straight face in comparing one of the worst financial purchases when it comes to appreciation we ever make in our life, which is an automobile, especially a run-of-the-mill, regular mass-produced automobile, with the worst appreciation of almost anything we could buy in our lifetime, to a wealth creator, a wealth engine, if you will, which is real estate, which has created generational wealth for millions and millions and hundreds of millions of people. Real estate in no 10-year span has ever been worse, worth less than it was at the beginning of that 10 year span. Pick any 10 years in the history of America and the starting price and the ending price didn't matter. In the middle of a recession, the price was still higher than it was 10 years before. Real estate appreciates. There is only so much land available on the planet Earth that we can build on. And with regulations, there's even less land we can build on. So there is always going to be a supply and demand as population grows. With Dodge, Challenger and Charger scat packs, that is not the circumstance. It is an absolute absurd, absurd comparison to make considering that we live in homes and we take a 30 year mortgage on a home, pay that home off, and then have something to live in that's free 30 years from now. That scat pack is not gonna be a daily driver 30 years from now. So it's just an unfair 
way of selling to people and you've got people in there that unfortunately seems like they buy it and they go, oh yeah, well that's true, real estate's inflated right now, so I might as well buy this car for way more than it's worth. I mean, that's insane logic, it's sad, it's, it's, it's just sad. It's really unfortunate that they would use real estate to compare to a car. And what planet are we on where that makes any sense? And second to last, I just have to make this statement that it feels a little unfair that car dealers are able to raise these prices when we aren't allowed to go directly to the manufacturer. So they're the face of the manufacturer. So we couldn't even go to the manufacturer without going through a dealer and say, look, we'd like to buy your product for the price that you believe it to be worth. Because by the time the car finds its way to the dealership, the dealership has control of that inventory and control of what price is delivered to the consumer. And the sad thing about that is, is none of those markups go to Stellantis, none of them go to Toyota, none of them go to the actual manufacturers because they're dealer markups. They stay there at the dealer. So if you're a shareholder of any of these companies, don't think that these markups are gonna lead to some blast off, blast off in stock price because that's not happening. All right, so lastly, I'm gonna wrap up with this. I would recommend all of you to hold tight. Don't go buy a car with a huge markup right now. Just don't. We know that inventory is gonna come back. My only concern is that there might be an unscrupulous dealership out there who may get delivered some cars three, four, five, six months from now, but not put them out on the lot, not put them on the showroom and keep them in the back. And just put the one out there and say, well, this is the only one and it's marked up. Maybe I'm being a little cynical, but I'm concerned that when this kind of behavior is taking place and it's very temporary and it's a huge opportunity for dealers to make a lot of money on lower number of sales, that we should be very cautious, concerned, and always shop around, always check with more than one dealership. Don't just go out and buy the first car that you get excited about in the dealership like I've done many times in my life and have hopefully learned my lessons at this point in this crazy world we're in right now is definitely reaffirming that. So with that, everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope this helps some of you out there. Again, I'm all for capitalist behavior. I'm all for people making money, but I'm not for overcharging and gouging people on prices for mass-produced vehicles in a temporary circumstance that's going to end in a relatively short period of time. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's get this party started.